First Timothy chapter number three. First Timothy chapter three. Verse 14 and verse number 15. These things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of truth. Thank you. You may have your seats. The grass withers and the flower of thy wild fadeth away. But the word of our God shall stand forever. I want to talk tonight about how to act in church. How to act. How to conduct yourself. How to behave how to act in church. I'm privileged to serve on a commission on Baptist, Baptist heritage and identity in the Baptist World Alliance. And I receive a newsletter periodically from Dr. Neville Callum, who is the General Secretary of the Baptist World Alliance, and he shared in his, his last newsletter that in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, some 400 years of Baptist tradition was commemorated celebrated with liturgical dance and celebration. And they named the names of Baptists who have meant much in our heritage across the years, and I recognized none of those names. For as a denomination, Baptists have been about 400 years uh, as a denominational sect and Dr. Callum, who is General Secretary of the Baptist World Alliance, mentioned many names of Baptists around the world who, has, who have meant much to our history and to our heritage. But I didn't see any of the names that I recognized. Names like Devine Roper, who would get up on Sunday morning at True Light Church where I was baptized. And when Reverend Wilkerson would get in the middle of his sermon, she'd stand up and run from the front of the church all the way to the back and then come back to the front and wind her hand getting ready to throw her pocketbook at him. Her name was not on that list. I didn't see the name of Annie Cross, whose wig was Baptist and backwards every Sunday morning and she would sing you may be high you may be low you may be rich and you may be poor but when the Lord gets ready you got to move I didn't see the name of Richard Walker who would get down on his knees and said Lord here we are once more and again knee bent and body already bowed with our heads bowed to the mother's dust and our hearts lifted to the throne of grace. Thank you that when we lay down last night, our bed was not our cooling board and our covers were not our winding sheet. We want to thank you for a reasonable portion of health and strength. I didn't see those names in that list. So I want to call the names of those persons tonight and remind those of us who were raised in the church that we ought not forsake the old landmark and forget where we came from because 
church is taking a funny shift and a strange turn the church used to be a hospital for crippled souls but it's becoming now a museum for frozen saints it used to be a clinic for wounded spirits but we are turning it into a theater of performing arts because a whole lot of stuff that passes for church is just smoke and mirrors sounding brass tinkling cymbals and church don't sound like church used to sound I need somebody here who was raised in the church like I was raised who can remember when you were chewing gum and the usher would take her program and, and go tap you on the back and, and say put that gum right here I wish I had somebody to help me here you remember when your mama would fall out and the ushers would get some smelling salts out of her pocket and put it under her nose and she'd go home and then she'd come back through and start shouting again because they knew that God had to bring them out they knew that God had to carry them through because there were nobody everywhere else but on Sunday morning a strange dignity caught them and a sense of grandeur overwhelmed them because they were called out of their names all week but Sunday morning they were brother so and so and sister so and so deacon and chairman and superintendent of the Sunday school they loved the Lord because he heard their cry pitted every groan long as I live while trouble rise I'm going to hasten to his throne. Uh, something, something's happening in the church. The Pastor Wes and I have been crying in our uh, coffee. I almost said beer, but we've been crying in our coffee. Because I, I, don't, I don't know if we have Americanized the gospel or spiritualized the American dream I haven't figured it out yet have we have we Americanized Europeanized the gospel or spiritualized the American dream to the degree that church no longer sounds like church used to sound our music is just R and B with Jesus sprinkled in every now and then. It's starting to sound like that mess I heard on 97.9 when this guy, this rapper had a song said, I ain't worried about nothing. 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 And, and, and I want to pull my car over and say, what are you not worried about, you ignorant? But, but, it, but in many of our churches, the music has that same hip-hop beat with Jesus thrown in every now and then. And the reason you got to sing it 30 minutes is because it has no theology in it. What's wrong with what a fellowship? What a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. What's wrong with blessed assurance? Jesus is mine. The young folk are calling that old school, but that's not old school. That's the music that brought us to where we are right now. And there's a sound that the church ought to still have because God's been good to us we are where we are we have what we have because it was nobody but Jesus Paul after giving the qualifications of the bishop and the deacon in this letter first and second Timothy Titus and Philemon belong to the Pauline corpus or body of doctrine known as the Pauline pastoral letters and he's writing to them as a father in the ministry 
as a pastor, as an overseer, to give them instructions of how they ought to act in church. Gnostic Judaizers have gotten into the fellowship to dilute and to weaken what Paul has established. And uh, young Timothy is pastor of the church in Ephesus. And Paul writes to him to give him some instructions of how we ought to act, how we ought to conduct ourselves, how we ought to behave in the house of God. It's right here in verse 14. These things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly, but if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou ought to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Uh, we, we ought to act with reverence for God. Reverence for God. There ought to be a holy awe when we come into the Lord's house. Uh, God is not the man upstairs. I, I, I wouldn't go to sleep tonight if there was a man upstairs. God is not a supreme being or a higher power. God, in the language of the Latins, is a mysterium tremendum. He's, he's the awful mystery. He's the dread sovereign of the universe. He's the event in eternity that made its advent in the context of time. He's divinity with dust painted on him. He is awesome other. He is God, very God. He's the ground of being. He's the source and center. He's the subject and the verb of the Christian religion. He's the center and the circumference. He's the first and the last. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. And we ought to reverence him. We ought to, we ought to have reverence so much for God that when we come in his house, we don't play church. Again, those of you who, like myself, were raised in church, We'd go to church and we would come back home and shout like Annie Cross. I would preach and, and Johnny would be Miss Devine Roper. Uh, and I have two sisters. They were ushers. They would catch Johnny when he was running. And then uh, I'd drink some water and start hollering again. And Johnny would just fall all out on the floor and my sisters had to grab and we were playing church. We were acting like what we saw. We were mimicking and mocking what we were around because we had no reverence for God. We had no experience. We hadn't been through anything. We were just, we were just mocking what we saw other people do. But I've been walking with the Lord now over 40 years. And I've been through enough in my life already some that you know about and some that you don't know about that God has brought me through so I don't have to play church anymore I don't have to shout like I used to see them shout at our church I don't act like I saw them act in our church I got my own story I got my own testimony I've got my own witness of what God has done in my life and I respect and reverence God so much that every time I hear his name it humbles me reverence uh, reverence for God fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom that's what reverence is. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Reverence for God helps you to differentiate between the sacred and the profane. Between the holy and the common. Reverence for God. Fear of the Lord. 
Isaiah said it was in the year that King Uzziah died that I saw also the Lord high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. Seraphim with six wings. With two they covered their face and with two they did fly and with two uh, they covered their feet. He said uh, smoke filled the house uh, because his presence was in the house. And Isaiah said, I saw the doorposts were moved at his presence. Inanimate wooden objects shouted in the presence of the living God. Now if a piece of wood can shout in the presence and have reverence for God, who woke you up this morning? Who put food on your table? Who helped you raise your children by yourself? Who opened doors that were closed in your face? That have reverence for God. That was the time, brothers and sisters. And I'm not trying to wax nostalgic and trying to get back to the good old days of when gas was 25 cents a gallon. And I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about they used to read the scripture and they start shouting. My old preacher, Reverend Wilkerson, didn't go to seminary, Ralph. He didn't know anything about uh, uh, Brunner and Bonhoeffer, uh, Brueggemann and Bart. Uh, he knew nothing about James Cone and Harvey Cox. Uh, he knew not a thing about systematic theology or, or dogmatic rhetoric. He, he could not explain exegeting a passage or eisegeting a passage of scripture. He just started preaching when he stood up and quit when he sat down. But before my feet could touch the floor, I heard him say, he died. And then he would say, didn't he die? And he wouldn't stop until he said, but bright early, Sunday morning, he rose from the dead. That used to get people excited. That used to make people shout. That used to make people praise the Lord. But we've gotten so sophisticated now and we are so tight now and we are so uppity now that we come to the church, the black church especially, and we don't like to carry on because the preacher makes too much noise and it don't take all of that. And that's too ignorant and that's too old timey. But when you get in trouble, you know how to leave 59 over there where Osteen is and come on back over here to meet us who know that everything we got come from the Lord. Yeah. Reverence of God. And then we ought to have respect for God's people. Reverence for God. That's how you ought to act in church. A respect for God's people. I, I don't know how y'all do it over here at the church without walls, but at Lily Grove where I preach, uh, I'm having a difficult time teaching the members of our church to just be loving and respectful of each other. Because they won't even let you sit down. They'll, they'll, they'll put a Bible in the seat and they'll put a... Y'all don't, don't do that on the north side. I'm talking about the Negroes on the, on the southeast side. And they'll put a Bible on the seat. And we got to almost have security to get you to get your stuff out the way so somebody can sit down. And then some politician will come to church who comes every two years or every four years to lie to us about what they're going to do for us. And we usher them down to the front and the man or the woman who needs to hear about Jesus, who's been smoking weed and got tattoos everywhere and pants hanging down, we make them sit in the back as if they are not important as those folk who lie to us. But I've come to tell you that Jesus died for the crackhead. He died for the homosexual. He died for the girl with tattoos on her neck. He died for the boy who's still smoking weed. And you ought not be so sanctimonious looking down your nose at them because you just put your weed down last week.
you just wash the club stamp off of your hand. All have sinned. Have I got a witness? And have come short of the glory of God. And if it were not for God's mercy, we'd be in hell right now. Yeah. I want to. I, I want to get over to us. That when you come in this church, you're not in control. <laughs> this is the Lord's house. And when people have been beaten and crushed and knocked about all the week long, you don't know who you're sitting next to tonight. You don't know how much of hell they went through in their family just to be able to get to church tonight. I wish I had a witness here. You don't know how much they had to go through on their job to get here tonight to praise the Lord, to have you looking at them like they smell or like they're not as good as you. Who do you think you are? You ain't nobody. If the Lord pulled the cover off you tonight, you'd be in the crack house just like that person you're criticizing. But grace mercy forgiveness he looked beyond my fault be, be kind to one another uh, you, you're not at the Reliance Stadium you're not at the Toyota Center you're at the house of God. I'm trying to move our church away from this. We're getting ready to, to build a new sanctuary at the church. And I told the architects that I don't want it to look like a stadium. Because stadiums are for fans. And, and many of our churches look like stadiums. And it's apropos because it's full of fans. People who admire Jesus, but they're not true disciples. I wish I had a witness right here. If you will be my disciple, you've got to deny yourself, take up a cross, and follow me. Have I got a witness here? Does not matter who comes in this church to join, the Bible says, not whosoever feels, but whosoever wills, let him come and drink from the fountain of life freely, and more people would join if the church would get out the way. See how quiet you got right there? You paid for that seat. You a tither, you teach a Sunday school class, I've been here 26 years. There's no seniority. There's no clique. There's no class in the house of God. There's no social strata. There is no economic background that gives you an upper hand over anybody. All of us come here on the same level. Lost and on our way to hell. And once we meet Jesus Christ and get saved, we are just sinners saved by grace. You're going to help me preach this, won't you? We are just nobodies trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. And I know he can save anybody because he saved me. He saved you. And just because you're saved now, don't look down your nose at that brother or sister who needs to be in the house of God. Respect him because he's made in the image and the likeness of God. This is how you ought to behave yourself in the church, in the house of God, which is the pillar and the ground of truth. 
There needs to be a holy reverence for God. There needs to be a respect for God's people. As I go to my seat, there's a responsibility that we ought to have towards God's word. The word of God is truth. Uh, it's not a subjective truth. It's eternal truth. And uh, I, I, I'm sick of folk getting their truth outside the Bible. I'm talking about folk who come to church reading their horoscope. Talk back to me if you can. Uh, talking about uh, you don't know me. I'm a Sagittarius. Uh, you, you better watch how you talk to me. I'm a Cancer. No, you're a sinner. And the reason for your ugly ways and your nasty disposition is because you have no responsibility toward the word of God. Come on, help me preach if you can. You're ugly acting old because you didn't have fun when you were young. The only old people who don't like young people is old people who didn't have fun when they were young people. Stop criticizing that girl. Stop criticizing her talking about, look at that little old fast gal. You used to be fast. With that little old short dress. Your dress used to be short. Come on, help me if you can. Don't hate because your dress no longer goes side to side. It's gone from front to back. All of us are headed that way. Church folk are so ugly and mean and nasty to people because they have no responsibility to the word of God. You sit down and act like this word is not affecting you. But I never heard a sermon that didn't hit me. It was either commending me for some good I was trying to do or reprimanding me for some good I was failing to do. But when I come to the house of God, I'm learning to humble myself because I'm in charge, but I'm not in control. God is in control. I said God is in control. And you know how you can tell at a church when God is in control? You don't need a choir director to get you all ginned up. Uh, you, you don't need a, a worship leader to tell you, let's put some hands together and, and praise the Lord. You just start thinking about where God brought you from. How many doors God has opened for you. How many ways God has made for you. And you don't need nobody to tell you give God a hand of praise or let's just praise. When you think about the goodness of the Lord, of how he brought you not only from a mighty long way, but how he brought you all the way. I need somebody here who can remember church the way church used to be. We would come out of those shotgun houses. Uh, to you folk here on the north side, you, you suburban Christians over here at the church without walls who don't know what a shotgun house is. A shotgun house, if you don't know, is a house you can look in the front door and see all the way to the back door. Come on, talk back to me if you can. And when it got cold in the wintertime, my mama would put some rags in the cracks. And then she would walk around in the house and light the heater before we got up in the morning. I wish I had a witness here. And then my grandmother would come over to the house and we had that heater with those little bricks on the inside of it. And my grandmother would stand up over that heater and raise a dress up and, and let the heat get under a dress. And then we had to gather around and pray before we went to school. I wish I had somebody to help me here. When the wind was in our face, they put some Vaseline on our face so that we can walk in the wind. Come on, talk back to me here. Some of you sisters here who got a perm and some weave now. Uh, you got some extensions now, but you remember that hot comb they used to have in the kitchen. They would put that hot comb on the stove, and your mama said, hold your ear down. 
and you would hold your ear down and go to school with your forehead all burned up but then we had some school clothes and we had some play clothes and then we had some church clothes and then when we put on our church clothes we knew we were going to church and then we knew how to act in church my mama didn't bring coloring books and and sippy cups to church come on talk back to me here uh, they didn't bring baby dolls to church my mama was sitting in the choir stand and we were in the back some of y'all remember how church used to be and she would look at us and all she had to do was look at us and we knew how to act in the house of god and then if she did like this that mean come on meet me outside because they didn't wait till we got home to chastise us they got us straight right there in the church and made us go back in the church i think ralph we ought to go back to btu y'all know what btu is we ought to go back real far to bypu uh, baptist young people's union baptist training union when people knew how to act in church but they sure enough knew how to shout in the church and how to praise god at the church the bible says let everything that has breath praise the lord if the lord opened doors for you come on help me show these young folk how to act in church if the lord been good to you come on let me show these you christians how to act in church is there anybody here no god's been good to you if the lord opened doors for you then you don't need nobody to tell you give god some praise if god has made a way for you you don't need nobody to tell you say amen if the lord been your keeper help me praise his name if he's opened doors for you help me magnify his name if he's been good to you help me give him the glory now you don't have to do it if you don't feel like it but some of us know in our soul that if it had not been for the lord on our side some of us ain't playing church no more some of us are real in here tonight because the lord has been good to me why don't you grab somebody shake somebody's hand tell him you don't know like i know what the lord has done for me i'm not playing no more i'm not playing right now you don't know like i know what the lord has done for me did he bring you out did he save your soul why don't you hug somebody why don't you grab somebody tell him i'm glad to be in the service he brought me he kept me he saved me say yeah yeah